The story of malachite indeed intertwines with the history of copper, showcasing the significance of this green mineral in the extraction of copper, a valuable metal. In 1785, in the far north of Namibia, a peculiar green mountain stood as a symbol of wealth for the inhabitants of the land. The mountain was rich in malachite, a mineral known for its vibrant green color and its copper content. Copper, when exposed to the elements, can develop a greenish patina, explaining the connection between the green mountain and the oxidized copper. The residents of the area, particularly the sand people, recognized the special nature of this green mountain and engaged in copper trading. The San were not alone in their pursuit of this valuable resource. The Ovambo people, coming on foot from the far north, traveled to the region specifically to trade copper ore. Upon the arrival of the Ovambo, a ritual was performed at the trading tree. A fire was lit to signal to the San that the ore buyers had arrived, initiating the silent exchange of goods. Underneath the tree, hand-forged tools, weapons, pots, salt, and glass beads were displayed by the Ovambo, while the sand presented their offerings, including copper ore, sinew strings, and ostrich eggs. Despite the language barrier between the two groups, the trading process was conducted in silence, emphasizing the importance of the transaction. Once the trade was completed, the Ovambo took the copper ore to smelt on the spot, utilizing termite mounds for the process. Guarding the Malachite Hill was crucial for the sand chief, who protected the valuable resource from potential theft. The chief's vigilance was enforced by the threat of arrows fired at anyone attempting to pilfer the Malachite ore, underscoring the economic and cultural significance of this green mountain in the intricate web of trade and resources in the region. In 1893, European explorers and prospectors reached the Malachite Hill, and this was what Matthew Rogers reported back when he first saw Malachite Hill. I have been holding places of trust for the past 24 years, have visited various countries of the world, inspected mines, mineral outcrops, and prospecting for minerals, have been associated with the minerals gold, silver, tin, copper and lead. But in the whole of my experience, I have never seen such a sight as was presented before my view at Sung Panai Veri. Much doubt if I shall ever see such another in any other locality. The hill was 12 meters high, 40 meters wide, and 180 meters long. This green malachite hill dominated this area. This is my story of hunting down malachite in Africa a couple of years back. We always wanted to get as close to the source as we can. In search of malachite, my brother, our friend Danny Kotobo, a well-known mineral dealer, and I embarked on a journey that led us from Zambia to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Our adventure, however, began with a series of challenges at the border. Paperwork complications and a demand for additional injections delayed our entry into the DRC for three frustrating hours. As we moved through the border town, the landscape transformed into a dense tropical forest, and the red earth dirt road quickly turned treacherous in wet conditions. Our journey took an unexpected turn when, just outside a town, we encountered a policeman attempting to halt our progress. However, Danny, boldly proclaiming, I stop for no policeman. This is my country. Narrowly avoided a confrontation by almost running the officer over. It became clear that our expedition would be far from ordinary. The toll gate, a simple stump obstructing the road, presented another unique challenge. Halting and paying the toll, we pushed forward to Lubumbashi, a sprawling city marked by scarcity of electricity and water. Our stay at a guest house took an unpleasant turn when, in the dead of night, police officers roused us from sleep, accusing us of failing to report our presence upon entering the city. To add insult to injury, they confiscated our passports, leaving a sour taste in my mouth. In the midst of these challenges, Danny, our trusted companion, unexpectedly took our car and vanished for three days, leaving us with no means of communication. Determined to salvage our mission, I sought out mineral dealers after today's. It was during this time that I delved into purchasing malachite. The discovery of gemstone factories, later revealed to be little more than metal huts constructed from corrugated iron, was a stark revelation. These makeshift structures exuded green malachite dust, 
coating every surface within. The absence of health and safety measures, including extractor fans, painted a grim picture of the working conditions. Each piece of malachite was painstakingly hand-cut and polished, with every malachite humble receiving the same meticulous treatment. Witnessing the labor and exposure to poisonous dust, I couldn't help but contemplate the toll this work takes on the workers, suspecting that longevity might be a rarity among them. This journey, narrated through my experiences, encapsulates the challenges, complexities, and human costs entwined with the pursuit of malachite in the heart of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Malachite, with its striking green hue, has a rich history steeped in myth, magic, and artistic expression. In Italy, people were triangular malachite pieces resembling eyes to ward off the evil eye. These were set in silver and believed to offer protection against negative influences. Additionally, malachite amulets carved with the rayed figure of the sun were thought to harness the symbolic power of light to repel dark magic. For centuries, malachite has been associated with protection, especially for infants. Parents would hang malachite beads on cradles to shield their children from evil spirits, ensuring peaceful sleep. Adults found comfort and restful sleep by holding a malachite in hand. Dubbed the salesman's stone, malachite's uniqueness, marketability, and individual patterns made it highly sought after. Merchants believed wearing it during business transactions attracted profitable deals. If kept with money, malachite was believed to increase wealth. Of course, in modern America, green is the color of money, symbolically and literally. Malachite's mystic purview includes the ability to foretell impending disaster. By breaking into pieces, these gems could warn their wearers. They could also protect merchants from falling. In ancient times, this wasn't an insignificant boon. After all, camels tend to be tall beasts. For riders, a fall could be dangerous. Archaeologists know the Egyptians worked malachite perhaps as early as 4000 BC. They found mines from that era in the Sinai. Beyond its physical allure, malachite played a significant role in ancient Egyptian rituals, symbolizing vegetation, new life, and fertility. In Egypt, malachite was used to make small vases, often coated with gold or silver, and then decorated with precious stones like lapis lazuli. These tiny containers would contain oils believed to have magical properties, making them valuable because of their rareness. It was used as a gemstone, ornamental material, and ground into pigments for painting and cosmetics. Even today, restoration experts use malachite pigment formulas for authenticity in conserving old paintings. The mystique of malachite extends to its use in Russian imperial courts, particularly during the 19th century. Russian royals adorned their palaces with malachite dining sets, sculptures, vases, and more. One of the grandest of all imperial palaces, the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg features a stately salon decorated with malachite, which was commissioned by Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna in 1830. It was in this room where the brides of Russia's imperial family, the Romanovs, were traditionally dressed by the Serena before their weddings. Centerpieces of the malachite room are the grand fireplace and an alley of columns along its sides entirely made from the most stunning malachite. More breathtaking architecture featuring malachite can be found in the St. Isaac's Cathedral in St. Petersburg, its use in protective amulets and eye makeup, as well as its association with resurrection, highlighted its spiritual importance. Malachite also found favor in early Aztec cultures and ancient China. Despite its toxic nature and health risks, malachite remains a captivating gem, admired for its deep green shades and unique patterns. From ancient rituals to modern art, malachite continues to weave its story through the tapestry of human history.